guys, so in this video, we've got some upgrades from our Armour Creighton 8S. So I've had this car since the day it was released, and it is an absolute beast. But it has a major weakness, and that is the chassis. So on my very first video, I actually bent it <laughs> on its very first jump. <laughs> oh, 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 So M2C Racing have just sent me this. The M2C Racing Crusher Chassis. Do you have a job you hate? Imagine if you could make more money from the comfort of your own home. That was my dream and it became a reality once I started selling on eBay. And I've now taught hundreds of people my secrets. So just check out the results here from some of my students. So if you're sick of that 9 to 5 and you want to make more money than a doctor from the comfort of your own home, then click on the link down below and I'll show you how. So this one here is made out of 7075 aluminium, so super, super strong. And this is actually a short wheelbase conversion kit, which is going to turn it into something, I guess, like an ATS Outcast. So if we hold the chassis here onto the old chassis, we can see that the old chassis is round about two inches longer. So a shorter wheelbase chassis is going to make it better for stunts. All your backflips, all your wheelies, all that crazy stuff. Anyway, enough waffle, let's just get the thing fitted. So the kit comes with everything that you need to convert your Creighton into a short wheelbase one. So you get the chassis, braces, top chassis braces, and also a shorter rear drive shaft. So where the stock chassis is pressed, the 7075 one comes with these different pieces that you kind of stack on top. Then you've got these different adjustments here that you can either add or remove to make the chassis more flexible or more rigid. I'm not really fully sure yet how these go on, so I will find out and you will see in this video. By the way, if you want to get yourself a kit like this, I'm going to put a link to where you can get it from down below. Rich Duper Bash to the rescue. So Rich Duper Bash was one of the first people that fitted one of these chassis. So make sure you check out his channel. So these pieces actually go here and here. So a lot of you guys keep asking me about this rally car build. I'm going to continue with this very, very soon. Colour-wise, a lot of you guys are saying do it yellow, orange, or red, even blue. Um, I'm kind of leading towards yellow at the moment. And now it's time to strip down the Creighton 8S. Oh my god, look at the bendage in that. So a lot of people always ask me, how do I remember where all the screws go? Well, I kind of just put them next to each component. So then when it comes to reassembling, it's going to be really easy. So there we have it, the chassis is now off. So although I'm, I really do love this 8S platform, it's just the size of it, the way it handles, the way it jumps, I mean the performance and everything, I'm really over the moon with it. It really is an epic piece of kit. But the chassis, in my opinion, is just an epic fail. I mean, for it to do this on like, the first jump, I mean, you're paying almost $1,000 for the truck. And then like for a new chassis, it's like over a hundred pounds. And we're looking at around about the same prices when we're looking at dollars as well. And you would have thought they would have learned from the 6S platforms that that soft aluminium just isn't up to the job for a basher. You know, once these are upgraded with all the M2C stuff, all the Just Bash It stuff, all the custom RC upgrades, the RPM, all the other stuff, then they're absolutely killer. It's probably one of the strongest cars that you can possibly get. They got it right with the 4S and the plastic chassis. This one really takes a beating. X Max with a plastic chassis, that really takes a beating. But luckily for us, companies like like M2C make some epic upgrades. But anyway, onto the positives. It came apart really easy. I do really love this truck and it has actually got potential once modified to be one of my new favorite. RC bashers. And overall, I do really like the design of it. It's nice how this sort of modular power unit is all in one unit. A lot of people thought it's the ESC speed controller servo all in one. 
No, it's not. They're all separate units, but they're all kind of screwed onto one block that just fits onto the chassis. This thing does actually look pretty easy to work on. The chassis came off pretty easily. Some of the design features look really good. Like if we look here, look, it's got these gaskets that are built around the diffs. Having a look in there, the diffs actually look super, super hardcore. I mean, they're expensive, but so far I'm not really hearing from anybody having any issues with them stripping. So that, so far, is very good news. But anyway, we've got to take the diff out so that we can fit this shorter shaft, and then we can have a look to see what it all looks like. And so far, it looks like we just got to take one, two, three, four, five screws out, and hopefully the diff's all going to drop out. So, no idea how this comes off now. Oh, there we go. So then on this end here, we've got a circuit that kind of holds it all together. I'll tell you what guys, the drivetrain and the gears in this thing are actually really, really impressive. If you look at all those spiral cut gears, it all looks super, super hardcore. All the sensor transmission, just the whole transmission in general on this truck looks absolutely epic. I mean, if you look at the engineering of this, I mean, it all looks really awesome. So definitely no complaints there. So next, I've got to take out the center diff. The center diff stock is really, really loose. So when you're accelerating hard, the front wheels just balloon up and there's sort of no sort of locking action in the center diff at all. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put in a silicon ear plug. That's a little trick that I use in a lot of my differentials. It almost locks them up solid, but it still has some give in there. Just absorb some sort of cushioning and stuff to stop it stripping any gears. So to get it out, it's got four screws on here. So I'm guessing I'll take those out and we'll be in there. Oh, there's another one. So I've got to remember that this red side here showing has to go to the same side as the red side of the box. That's the way I've got to try and remember it. Guys, in there, it looks really, really well put together. The gears look really well made. I mean, I'm really impressed with the design of this car. So to get inside of here, it's got screws on this side and on this side. So I'm not really sure which side it's going to get in my diff gears, but I guess we'll find out. Oh my god, that is tight. That does not want to come out about this side. Alright, let's take this side off first then. Man, that has got some Loctite in there. Oh my God, I'm going to have to heat these up. So I don't really want to heat it up with a flame because there's all grease in there and I'm not sure if there's any plastic in there. So I've got this 100 watt soldering iron here. This thing gets crazy hot. So hot, in fact, that this part here, when you turn the lights off, actually glows red hot. So I'm just going to let it chill there for a little while and then we're going to see if we can take the screws out. All right, so that's been chilling there for five minutes now. So now let's see if it will come out. Not with that one, it won't. Oh God. Oh, it's coming out! Oh yes, we can get in! <laughs> so by the looks of it, you can probably get in on both sides. So we're just going to let that chew upside down for a little while, let most of that diff grease out of there, and then we're going to get the old ear plugage in there. Oh, right, so it's been about an hour. Yeah, little bits come out. I think we're going to have to clean all of this stuff off of here properly, because if we leave it on there and just top it up with an ear plug, it's going to kind of dilute it and water it down. So I want to get all this stuff out. Uh oh. So 
So this is brake cleaner. I'm hoping that's going to dissolve it all. But the more of this stuff that I can get off, the better the differential is going to lock up with the earplugs. I mean, that doesn't really look like it's doing much. Maybe if I leave it for half an hour. So while that's soaking in, we can assemble these center braces. So it comes with a couple of nuts here. So I'm assuming you put these on first, like there's some sort of adjustment in there. Yes, that's starting to dissolve in there, look. All oh, right, so I've left it soaking for about an hour and it's actually cleaned it up pretty perfectly. Check that out. Hopefully in here, we've done the same. So there we go, got it all cleaned up perfectly. So as you can see with these, these are like really thick, a lot thicker viscosity than any diff fluid's gonna be. And that's almost gonna lock it up completely. So we really wanna ram it in there, make sure that we get it right inside all the grooves, get it right into the bottom. You can use like a driver or something just to try and really ram it in there as far as you can. That's what she said. So I'm going to keep doing that and then we'll get you back on in a minute. All right, so I've just spent some time really ramming it in there and it's eaten so far one and a half earplugs. So by the looks of it, there's room to get even more in there. Not sure if it's going to take another entire one, but maybe if you don't get enough in there over time, it's all going to work itself on the outside and it's going to go loose again. So it's really worth spending your time and getting as much of it in there as what you can, but make sure you don't put too much in. Otherwise you can't get lid back on. So there we go. I think that's probably enough in there now. So we have to get this gear back on. Not really sure how these work. I didn't really pay any attention when they came out. All right, well, I will figure out and then we'll get you back on. Ah, I've sussed it. So these slots have to line up with those slots there. I thought they were some, some sort of a cush drive or something, but they're not. Then these are just spacers to keep it spaced away. So, we get three of those in three different locations. Boom. A little double of Loctite, but I'm not going to put too much on because this is really the stud lock stuff, the crazy strong stuff. <laughs> Boom. Oh man, that's really made it tighter. But look, as you can see, it still moves. So if you land it bad, it's going to have a little bit of give on there, but it's almost going to lock it entirely. So now we can get this back into the transmission, remembering the red side here towards the motor mount. Cover back on. Should have probably cleaned it all before I took it apart, but I'm lazy. So when it comes to greasing up gears, I like to grease gears that are enclosed because no dirt gets in. But then the gears that are exposed to all the elements, you want to leave them dry because if you grease these up, all the dirt's going to stick to it. It's going to turn it into a grinding paste and it's going to be just worse than just leaving it dry. Oh, little boo-boo there. I put Loctite on these screws here but you don't want to lock tight any screws that go into plastic. So these three screws here for the motor mount, they're going into metal. The other two are going into the plastic transmission. So on this end here, we've got to adjust it so that it lines up with a hole here. And then we can lock up this lock nut. Then the same again on the top bar. Boom! Actually, not boom, because I forgot to put this back in. Now it's boom. All right, so now I've got to do the same to the other side and then we can get the servo module back in. So I got it all back together again, guys. 
I'm actually impressed how easy it is to work on these Armour Creighton 8S's. It is so easy to work on, the design of it, they've really put some effort into it, they've really put some thought into it, and the way it all goes together, the ease of working on it, I mean, it's, it's really good. The fit and the finish of the M2C chassis is just absolutely perfect, no problems at all, just went straight on. Just check it out. So let's give it a quick blast. So I'm gonna run it on these four cell ZOP power LiPo's. These are dirt cheap, loads of power, and so far, I've had them for about a year, they've been absolutely perfect. And if you wanna know where to get them from, there's gonna be a link down below. And you can see how old they are. They've all been battered and abused, and they're still perfectly flat. No puffing, all the cells are charging up perfectly. So far, I've had really great luck with these. A test, baby. And next modification that I'm going to have to do on this, I want to change the servo, the stock servo. It's just a little bit on the weak side. So, so far, very impressed. It actually responds really well with a shorter wheelbase. I'm actually quite liking it. I usually prefer the longer wheelbase stuff, but at the moment, it's pretty good. I can't wait to take it to a skate park, really air it out, give it some abuse, and just to see how it handles. But we have to wait for all this coronavirus stuff to go away before we can really take it out and give it a proper run. I need to turn up the brakes somehow. The brakes are very, very weak, and I also need to sort out the steering. Now, somebody did say I can up the voltage of this, the Beck voltage, to give the servo a little bit more power. So maybe that's something I've got to look at. And hopefully, while I'm in the settings, I can turn up the brakes as well. Now, when it comes to body, you're going to have to be a little bit creative. Obviously, the stock body, it's not really going to fit on there anymore now. So I don't really... Uh, I probably could cut the back off and make some new holes. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to leave it short wheelbase. I'm, I'm probably still going to make it long wheelbase again at some point. And then I don't really want to destroy this body. So uh, nah. do we cut it? Do we leave it? So up here in my parts department, I've actually got a couple of Russian indestructible bodies. So maybe... We can cut one of those, but uh, it's painful wrecking a brand new body, but uh, I think that's all I've got. This is an RC Maniac's indestructible body. It's actually supposed to be for the X-Max, but I've got a few of these upstairs, and I might as well repurpose this one to fit onto here. So massive thanks to Anatoly from RC Maniac's. I'm going to put a link to his eBay store down below where you can get these from. So this one here is the first body that I had on my X-Max indestructible one, and this one I actually tried to kill it. I was grinding it along on the floor upside down. Down. I even ran it over with my car. I was landing it upside down. I beat on it for probably over a year and it's, it's scraped up, but it's still in good condition other than that. I mean, we've got a couple of little spits here and there, but I mean, the amount of abuse it took, it's amazing. So I put a different body on it only because this one looks a little bit more tidy. Oh man, it's painful cutting up a brand new body. We're going to start off about here. So next, we've got to add some windows, and for that, I've got some of this black vinyl stuff here. Boom! There we go. So once again, massive thanks to M2C for the chassis. Link to that down below. And also RC Maniacs for the body. Link to that down below too. And hopefully we're going to get this corona nonsense out of the way fairly soon so we can go out and take it for a blast.